Merry-Go-Round was a national clothing retail chain that opened in 1968 and closed in 1996. Now, you see them jackets? I wonder where they got them. The first merry-go-round boutique was founded by boyhood chums Leonard Wineglass and Harold Goldsmith. The idea to open the first store came from a visit to the Different Drummer, a hippie boutique store in New York with a sign out front asking, tired of the same old ish? Boogie walked in and was met by two saleswomen wearing short pants, high heels, and tight t-shirts. They took his sport coat off and dressed him in a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. And I liked the way I looked in these jeans and this t-shirt, Boogie said. I realized I had a good body and I looked good and she said, that's a lot better. He brought the idea back to Atlanta in 1968 when few locals had ever seen bell bottoms, blue jeans, or see-through mesh shirts. He also sold head shop items at the store, which was two blocks from Georgia Tech and other schools. Merry-Go-Round was successful immediately, selling out almost everything in the first two weeks. Taking a sledgehammer to the wall, Boogie expanded into the next door space in less than two months. The store was unique, and it was very profitable. Boogie bought vintage U.S. Navy peacoats, cleaned them up for about $3 a piece, and sold them for $35 each. Kids also liked his floppy hats, trendy boots, and store-made sandals. By 1970, he was running four stores, and a friend from Baltimore, Harold Goldsmith, showed up. This led to a partnership that landed Merry-Go-Round, a retail space at Atlanta's famed Lenox Square shopping mall. While Boogie, the merchant, dealt with the long hairs and continued opening stores, the younger, more clean-cut goldsmith complimented him by signing leases and dealing with banks and computer systems. Boogie had previously had tried for a space at Lenox on his own, but the mall manager was unimpressed with Boogie, who, by his account, looked like a second-class drug dealer peddling bell-bottoms in hippie culture. Goldsmith lined up a second interview with the manager, and this time he had Boogie cleaned up and wearing a suit. With his charisma and knowledge, Boogie came to an agreement with the man, who owned another 80 upscale mall locations. In the early 1970s, store interiors were all black, and clothing was held in bins or by metal chains. Merry-Go-Round's first fashion coup was to sell pre-washed patchwork denim jeans in 1974, which immediately became a hit among fashion-conscious youth and helped boost the company's out-of-recession. The company was also the first to place an order with Bugle Boy, a manufacturer of casual sportswear destined to become popular among teenagers. In 1977, Merry-Go-Round began capitalizing on the disco craze ignited by the movie Saturday Night Fever by selling silk shirts and three-piece polyester suits. When the movie Urban Cowboy was released, Merry-Go-Round stores began carrying western wear and suede jackets with fringe on the sleeves. Mary Go Round's buyers began closely studying the cable television channel MTV, or Music Television, shortly after its debut in the late 1970s. From that point on, MTV became the source of many designs introduced in Mary Go Round stores. When pop star Michael Jackson appeared on MTV wearing a red leather jacket with 27 zippers, Mary Go Round sold more than 50,000 similar jackets at $29 each. Cashing in on fashion trends is considered a risky business, but in 1979, Merry-Go-Round 
realized that it was best not to tamper with its seemingly precarious formula for success. Fearing that the economic recession would hurt the high-end fashion business, merry-go-round stores began selling less expensive, less fashionable clothing. The company quickly found out that customers weren't all that price conscious, they were more interested in fashion. Accordingly, merry-go-round discontinued its lower-priced merchandise and returned to selling more clothing that followed trends set by rock and roll and other media stars. In 1982, Merry-Go-Round opened two new clothing chains, Ship and Store Showcase Shops, a women's clothing chain offering medium-priced sportswear designed for a more conservative clientele of working women. DJ's Fashion Center for Men offered a wider selection of male fashions than traditional Merry-Go-Round stores and was aimed at attracting a clientele of fashion-conscious men, a group that had been previously underserved in most shopping malls. The rapidly expanding merry-go-round was subdivided into three divisions. The largest division was comprised of the merry-go-round chain, numbering close to about 200 stores. The second largest, called the men's division, housed the fastest growing DJ's chain, while the third largest housed shipping stores showcase shops. Merry-go-round enterprises owned 247 stores in 29 states, including 204 merry-go-round stores, 33 DJs, fashion centers for men, and 10 ship and store showcase shops by 1984. In 1987, merry-go-round enterprises was ranked 34th on the Forbes list of 200 best small companies in America. The company continued expanding its profitable men's division, buying the 28-unit sportswear chain Casey & Osh in 1988 to convert it into a new chain of Ativo stores. Including the Carrie & Osh acquisition, the number of Merry-Go-Round Enterprises stores grew to 459 by March of 1988. In 1993, Merry-Go-Round purchased the 476-store chain of Chess King Garage Men's Clothing Stores from Melville Corporation for an undisclosed amount. The company also launched the IOU brand. This was considered one of the 80s most popular fashion brands. It also happened to be launched as Merry-Go-Round's first private label. By 1990, the brand accounted for 25 to 30 percent of Merry-Go-Round Enterprises' annual sales. Even a number of counterfeit clothing items were illegally made from IOU's popular t-shirts, sweaters, and shorts. In 1991, Merry-Go-Round was accused in a minor race scandal when one of their customers noticed the sales clerks at all stores wrote down the customer's ethnicity on the back of their personal checks. This led to a front page story on the cover of Boston Globe. The next day, Merry-Go-Round announced the practice would be discontinued and explained the purpose of noting each customer's race was for identification purpose, in case the check didn't clear. By the early 1990s, they had 1,500 stores, a 1 million square foot warehouse in Baltimore, and they had reached $1 billion in sales. The future looked bright. Mary Go Round filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 1994 and began liquidation sales by February of 1996. After a two year battle to emerge from Chapter 11 bankruptcy, the apparel retailer ran out of money and lost the support of manufacturers who supplied the company's 536 remaining stores. The company couldn't hold its own against the thousands of other stores selling similar clothes. Merry-Go-Round had fallen victim to the competitive retail environment, the sluggish economy, and a teenage population less interested in trendy garb than in the past. The founder, Boogie Wineglass, blamed the company's troubles on its 1993 purchase of the Chess King chain. What do you think?
So what are your favorite memories of this store? Leave a comment and maybe even a suggestion on a future video below. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you just watched my video, thanks for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to Eric C. Productions.